Uh, so I'm here this afternoon to talk about two overnight aggravated serious criminal trespass incidents. Uh, the first of these occurred at about 11.10pm Tuesday the 8th of October when South Australian Ambulance Service attended a house on Field Street, Parafield Gardens as a result of a man being assaulted by a group of men. This man suffered injuries to his head, arm and torso from the attack which were consistent with a knife or a machete being used. He has been treated in hospital for his injuries and his injuries are not believed to be life-threatening, but they are serious. Police are currently investigating what the motive was and further inquiries are being conducted with the occupants of the house as part of the ongoing investigation. Further investigation indicates that the males were armed with edged weapons, uh, knives and machetes and possibly a small handgun. It is believed that this is a targeted attack and police don't believe the public are in any imminent risk from these suspects. The residents of the house in Parafield Gardens are known to police. Reports from witnesses indicate there were four male suspects wearing balaclavas, gloves and were described as of Aboriginal appearance. Witnesses in the street also cited two males leaving the scene shortly after in a white Hyundai i30 with black wheel rims and black door handles. Forensic inquiries are being undertaken at the scene to help identify evidence that may assist this investigation. And I ask any person who has information about this crime to contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000 and they can remain anonymous. In a further unrelated incident, at 3.45 a.m. on Wednesday the 9th of October, Police were called to a house on Nelson Road, Gulfview Heights, as a result of an aggravated serious criminal trespass where three occupants of the house were injured. As with the Parafield Gardens incident, police believe this is a targeted attack and there is no imminent risk to the public. Witnesses state that four men entered the house using force and immediately slashed at and stabbed a man inside the house. A second victim, a woman who was resident, then confronted the group and was also attacked using edged weapons. A third person, a man who was also an occupant of the house, chased the offenders and a further altercation occurred outside. And during this, this man received minor hand injuries. All three victims were taken to hospital where their injuries are being treated and they are not described as life-threatening. It is believed that one of the suspects may have suffered back and leg injuries during the altercation that occurred outside. The condition of the injured suspect is not known and police are appealing for this person to seek medical attention for the treatment of their wounds. Police are also appealing for any person who may have information concerning this man or their injuries or any of the other people involved in this incident to contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. The suspects are all described as male, with slim builds and late teens to early 20s. And they are believed to have left the scene in a vehicle described as a dark coloured sedan, which may be a blue magna seen nearby at the time of the offence. Part of this police investigation involves assessing whether this incident is linked to recent Operation Meld investigations, which involve conflict between two rival youth gangs. Again, crime scene examinations are being undertaken at the address and Northern District detectives, with assistance from Operation Meld, are actively attending addresses in the metropolitan area in relation to this incident. What I can add is that in the last week, Operation Meld investigators have arrested a 17-year-old man for carrying offensive weapon breaching bail conditions, a 17-year-old man for breach of bail, an 18-year-old man for shop theft and carrying an article of disguise, a 16-year-old man for shop theft, a 15-year-old man for robbery, breach of bail and theft, a 21-year-old man for disorderly behaviour, carry offensive weapon, shop theft, making off without payment, assault and property damage, a 17-year-old man carrying an article of disguise, a 16-year-old man for shop theft, a 17-year-old man for assault cause harm, and a 26-year-old man for assault cause harm. All of these people are either gang members or associates of the gangs that I have referred to as part of the Operation Meld investigations. 
Whilst those offences are not directly related to some of the incidents that have been occurring recently, they do involve these people that are involved with this gang activity. It is our aim to, con to continue to put considerable pressure on these gang members and their associates to disrupt their criminal activity. As I've said, these two incidents are not connected and significant resources are being committed to both of them from across SAPOL and we are pursuing in both instances active lines of inquiry. Thank you. So are there eight people outstanding across these two incidents? That's correct. Yes. Are the um, two people that were stabbed mother and son? Uh, I can't confirm this at this stage, but um, they are occupants of the house, yes. What's the relation of the occupants to the offenders? What's the link? Uh, we believe they're known. Um, at this stage, that's forming part of the investigation and what that level of uh, association is, we're still unravelling. Um, but as I've said, this is not a targeted attack. Uh, it's, sorry, it is a targeted attack and we don't believe it's a, it's a random incident. The suspects from the recent air assault also fled the scene in a dark sedan. Do you believe it's the same suspects, the same group? It will certainly form part of the overall investigation. As I've said, there are two distinct uh, levels of activity occurring here. One is what we say is related to Operation Meld and there have been other aggravated serious criminal trespasses that have occurred and uh, all of those offences are being investigated cumulatively uh, and we're assessing any links that exist between those uh, and then the Parafield Gardens incident. But none of the um, nine arrested in the past week um, are alleged to have been involved in the air or Kilburn? Those investigations are still ongoing. Uh, the people that I have mentioned that have been arrested by our Operation Meld investigators, we will allege have some type of gang affiliation or associated with that gang activity. The Parafield Gardens incident, you said there was handgun and a machete involved? Yes, we believe so, yes. And did you say in a uh, street for that incident? Sorry? Did you say where that happened in Parafield Gardens? Field Street? Uh, Field Street, sorry, um, yes. And you can, is there a rise in um, edged weapons um, on our street? It's certainly concerning that anyone that commits an offence with a weapon, um, be that a knife or a gun, is very concerning. Um, the propensity for that type of violence is the reason we are committing so much resources to finding these people and holding them to account for their uh, actions. Where are teenagers getting machetes from? Ah, uh, again, I, I can't say. They're, they're, they're a weapon that is available, and there are rules around selling um, knives uh, to children under the age of um, 16. Um, so in terms of where they're available, uh, I can't say, um, but I can say that it is very concerning that this type of weapon is being used. Have you been able to establish a motive for the um, break-in and go to the heist? Uh, we believe it's associated with the current level of uh, conflict that's occurring between what we say are rival gangs. What is the conflict? Is it territorial? Or? Uh, it's, it's sometimes it's difficult to say. Um, there are various reasons for it that uh, irrespective of what their motive is, uh, their criminal activity is something that we are putting a lot of resources into. And are the Gold Key Heights victims cooperating with detectives? Uh, that is part of the investigation, yes. Because, I mean, is it frustrating when sometimes victims might think they've got a gang code of silence where they can't be using names? Uh, ag again, um, all, all of those factors form part of the investigation and, um, as, as I said, we will hold people to account for their actions. Was there a particular, you know, month where you first noticed the uptick of uh, crime among the two youth gang groups? Uh, not particularly. Um, we have spoken previously about our um, investigations involving the specific Operation Meld, uh, and that's been occurring now over a number of years. Um, there are periods in time when there are those conflict is heightened, um, and currently the reason why we are putting so much resources into that is because it would appear at the moment um, that we have a rise in that type of offending between these groups. Yeah. They have particular identities, like they have their own names, or they're sort of disparate individuals who've acted together? Uh, no, they do They do associate with names. Uh, and again, we've um, disclosed that previously, and that's formed part of the public disclosure of um, the type of criminal activity we're looking at. I know you say, um, you know, the gang-related attacks have 
targeted and, and not random, but I mean, really all it would take is the decisive suspect to get the wrong house and to have another case of mistaken identity. I mean, it are, is the public at risk here and should they be on edge? No, what, what we say is that there's always a risk that something inadvertent may occur. Um, but again, our resources are committed to finding the people responsible and getting them into custody as quickly as possible. How many of the nine arrested in the past week are in custody? Or uh, I don't have that day? detail, sorry. Last question. Sorry, thank you. There is um, a slightly different, rather different matter. The state government of the Attorney General is out today saying, uh, I want to propose a law against uploading on social media platforms illegal activity. It could be anything from biomax to home vehicle driving to vandalism and it could fetch a two year sentence. It's out for public consultation uh, broadly and nationally as well. Um, would you be making a submission to that sort of proposal? I think we would have to consider making a submission. I don't have the full detail on the, what is proposed, but obviously uh, anything that would benefit uh, crime prevention, crime reduction, and again, uh, holds people uh, responsible for their actions, um, we would um, support. Do you, do the state Bowl police generally have the time and resources to sort of be scrolling through the social media looking for misbehaviour? Uh, of any investigation, social media is um, part of any evidentiary material that's considered. So, uh, yes, we do put resources into it. Uh, and again, all investigations will consider any of the available information. Thank you. Thank you.